reading kind of the testimonials of these parents who were involved in this process, this seems very psychologically damaging and not healthy. We are the Armed Attorneys today. We're talking about a new low, maybe rock bottom. Is that as low? It's pretty low. Um, new manipulation mm -hmm. technique the gun grabbers are engaging in, how they're using it to seek more gun control, and whether we think this tactic is fair game or not. But we're going to be talking about all that. But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And I think a kind of, I think a fun illustration of this, is, but not as low as what we're going to talk about, is what happened in Indiana. Well, it's just the natural progression. So what happened in Indiana was that a state lawmaker was confronted by a bunch of children because we know that the gun control advocates that they they are not afraid to effectively or uh, ineffectively try to use children to advocate for their political point. And so he simply was trying to explain to these teenagers how it is irrational to be afraid of somebody simply because they are in possession of a gun, at which point he illustrated it by opening up his jacket and showing them his holstered handgun that he obviously was lawfully able to carry. Yeah, that caused uh, a meltdown. Did not touch the gun, did not threaten to touch the gun, did not say he was going to touch it, merely opened up his jacket and said, well, I'm carrying a gun right now. And, of course, the anti-gun teens reacted as you would think they would and completely turned into sniveling piles of intimidated goo. Yeah, let's check this out. You're not truly free if you can't defend yourself. So, do you mean by carrying a Yes, I'm, I'm carrying it right now. See, and nothing about that makes me feel safe, no. though. I'm you sorry? telling, I'm saying nothing about someone carrying a gun makes me feel safe. It makes me okay, feel threatened. So, okay, about. why do you feel the need to carry that? To be able to defend myself. So you you think when you come here that someone's going to there are intentionally people, hurt Okay, you. look at the crime rate in Indiana or in Indianapolis. People get shot. Right. Okay. Yes. Oftentimes, more, more often by people that are multiply convicted on felony accounts. These are people that shouldn't have guns. The law says you cannot have a gun. The law is not so. One, the law didn't stop them the first time. The law didn't stop them the second, third, or fourth time. These are people that don't care about how many laws we put on the books. All right, so Representative Jim Lucas there saying all true things. Guess what? You know, gun laws don't stop criminals intent on doing evil things, uh, something we all know about. But we got to talk about the new low. Well, that... I wanted to make one point okay. to that, to that one teen uh, who you heard on the video to her credit, she did admit that this legislation is all about her feelings. Oh yeah. That, I mean, that's, yeah. that is worth, so that is worthy of pointing out. Facts don't matter. Rights don't matter. Uh, it's all about her and people who agree with her feelings is the reason that we should all be encumbered with criminal legislation that could send somebody, send somebody to prison for years and years and years simply to protect her feelings. So let's talk about this new manipulation, what is going on and how they're using it to push for gun control and whether this is just, I, I'm interested to see what y'all have to say, whether or not this tactic is fair game or not. But essentially what we have here is we have folks using AI generated voice, you know, they can take a sample of someone's voice and recording it with anti-gun messages, but what's the catch of whose voices they're using? Yeah, so they are using the voices of individuals who have been killed by guns. Some in very high profile events like the Parkland shooting and the Rob Elementary shooting, and then some of course that are just um uh, your, your everyday, uh, folks, for example, they have one gentleman on there who unalived himself through self deletion with a firearm. Uh, so they've used his voice. Take that uh, YouTube. And so uh, they're using obviously with the consent of the families, uh, their voices to create these messages, uh, about how legislators should pass gun control. This is being pushed by the March for Our Lives folks and the Change the Ref. That's a new one I hadn't heard of, but they're just as bad as it sounds. And, you know, reading kind of the testimonials of these parents who were involved in this process, this seems very psychologically damaging and not healthy. 
Yeah. And in which, you know, I'd like to say that we are not trying to impugn their right to do this. Anybody can do whatever they want. They can use any form of political advocacy. They can, you know, they're the, the first amendment protects all of this activity. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a first amendment absolute. You can do whatever you want, but that doesn't mean we don't have the right to comment on how ghoulish and possibly inappropriate it is. Yeah. So they're taking these voice templates and they are, recording anti-gun messages and then they're hitting lawmakers phones with these calls um, and they're very manipulative you know my body was destroyed but you know my voice is here for you to to you know take a second look at gun control i mean it's really disgusting stuff yeah and so they're not content to use live children they're now moving on to the use of dead children ai generated uh, dead children we know um but even in this article that one of these people, they were 30 years old. They kept referring to the voice templates as all young adults mm -hmm. and our youths. 30 years old. Last time I checked, that's not a kid. Yeah. And so has this set a new bar? Has this set a new standard? Will now pro Second Amendment, pro self-defense advocates, will they now, you know, with consent, obviously, use the AI generated voices of murder victims? Yeah. Crime to, victims. Yeah. To then say, if I would have only had my gun, I'd be alive. If my state wouldn't have prohibited me from having a gun, I would be alive. Yeah, this, uh, I'm interested to see what you folks have to say. Is this tactic fair game? I am of the belief that this is probably going too far. Uh, probably. It'll be interesting to see how the media reacts. If the media then starts confronting these legislatures about how could you listen to the voices of a, of a dead child and not vote to pass whatever gun control measure is hip at the time. I noticed that they always uh, seem to, again, impugn the AR-15, calling it an assault weapon, calling it a weapon of war, and which I guess if you're AI generating it, you can have this voice say literally whatever you want. But I mean, we see that the gun grabbers won't let any crisis go to waste. We had our, you know, Super Bowl parade shooting incident that looks more like a gang shooting. You know, they're being suspiciously light on the details with that. Um, I'd really like to hear the bottom of that, or is it going to go away like the Nashville incident? But you see how that immediately translated into the legislature, their legislature saying, oh, we're not going to pass sales tax relief on firearms and, you know, things that had nothing to do with it. Uh, but we see how they use this kind of manipulation to just, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, they're going to use it, um, you know, bend, bend folks to their will. Mm -hmm. Christatunity. Christatunity. <laughs> But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And don't forget to question and comment down below. And until next time, we're the Armed Deterrence. Change the ref. What a...